Hello random people, welcome to Random Garage, the channel where we're always doing something. Today on Random Garage, we'll be stripping some parts off of this 2019 Fatboy 114. It needs new rubber anyway, so the wheels will come off and get completely stripped. Bearings out, all the parts off, because they're getting some uh, black powder coat. And uh, a few other parts are coming off the bike too, also to get powder coated. The uh, headlight nacelle the there, this dash panel, and the fender struts, and the belt guard. Also be just hand painting the sprocket. And maybe I come up with some other parts. I think should probably also pull off the shift arm there and get that powder coated black as well. So I'm thinking this will be part one of a two part series. Do one with the disassembly and then uh, one with the whole reassembly process with the torque values for all the fasteners and all that kind of good stuff. And I don't have a real good way to tie the bike down to this frame lift like this. On the one side I could get the handlebar down to the lift and the rear rack down there but on the other side because it's not raised up all the way I can't get to those tie down points over here so I'm not even going to tie it down. I don't want to just do one side, so I'll just leave it. So then, instead now I have it just at a level so the front tire is barely touching the ground, but then the rear was off the ground, so I put my low profile floor jack under there and put just a little bit of tension on that rear wheel because these wheels are so heavy, I think that if I just had it in the air, as soon as I pulled off one wheel, the bike would tip the other direction. I'll start by taking the brake caliper off and that's just a matter of pulling out these two fasteners that hold it to the fork. Those are metric. It takes a 12.10 millimeter socket. And then to not put any undue tension on the wheel sensor wire, I'm gonna just take that out of its clips here where it is clipped to the brake line. Next on this front wheel is loosening up. There's a pinch bolt right up in here. You see the split there where it squeezes together to hold the axle in place. And that takes a hex and it's, it's another metric bolt. So that is a, a six millimeter. Then this axle just unscrews with a large hex tool into there and crank it out because this end is threaded right here into the left side fork. 0.777 inch, I'm guessing it's metric. That's going to be, that works out to 19.7 millimeters. So a three quarter inch and a 19 millimeter, but either one's gonna work in that size. They're close enough. And unfortunately I don't have an Allen that size. So we're gonna have to get creative here. Now actually I found that I have this uh, socket tool from like a cheap, uh, a kit that would come with an ATV or a snowmobile or something and this end of it happens to fit in there nice and snug and then this end fits a 13 16 socket nice and snug so then we'll twist that axle out I'm just going to carefully jack the bike up some more and then uh, the wheel will just stay on the floor and the wheel speed sensor and this spacer and this spacer will stay with the wheel and it'll just slide right down off the forks. I guess it wasn't a spacer on this side that's actually part of the left side fork there so that's nice. That'll make putting it back together a lot easier. So it's not two pieces on this side. It's just the one. It's a wheel speed sensor hanging there. Okay, front wheel's off. Now for the rear wheel. I notice Harley finally 
got a little smarter here on the soft tails and put the axle the correct direction. Nuts on this side so the axle will pull out that way. What they traditionally did, at least on dynas anyway, was the axle will come out this side. And if you had stock exhaust or a long exhaust, your slip-on muffler would be in the way from pulling that axle out. So what I've always done, first time I ever do a tire change on a dyna, is when I put the axle back in, I put it back in the other way. Even though I don't have exhaust that's in the way, it's that way anyway, I have the nut on the right side. All our dynas are set up that way. First I'm gonna pull this plastic front belt guard off. There's uh, just that fastener, that fastener, and that one. And then uh, the upper belt guard, which will then at that point only be held on by one more fastener right here. And those all take a T40 Torx. Next we'll get the caliper loose by pulling out that bolt and that bolt and those take a uh, metric M12 socket. I wasn't able to do much to get the caliper out of the way but I just kind of set it over this way here. There should be just enough clearance here after I take the axle out to get the wheel out and get it to move around the caliper there. The service manual always says to loosen the axle adjusters before taking the axle out but I never do that because I like to just keep the belt tension if the wheel alignment and belt tension is already good as long as you have the wheel kind of just barely supported it's pretty easy to just pull the axle out and then uh, pop it back in when you're putting the wheel back on so that's the way I've always done it so next thing then is to just pull off this c-clip take off the nut and then pull the axle out the left side one and seven sixteenths size socket on this nut Now with the axle out, I can jack the bike up a little more and then push the wheel forward a little bit and get the belt off the sprocket. Okay, it's getting there. A little wiggling and twisting and stuff. It was a little difficult to get the long spacer on the left side to come out, but finally got it twisted in this position. It came right out, so now I just finished jacking the bike up and get the wheel out the bottom. Okay, got that heavy beast off of there. I suppose I'll strip down the wheels next in case you're here just interested in the wheel part and then after that I'll pull those other couple pieces off the bike. Just for kicks, let's weigh this huge thing. Looks to me like 52 pounds fully dressed. And of course, that's not a brand new tire so it's missing some, a little bit of weight. Here the front one looks like 33, 34 pounds. So I'll take off the uh, brake disc next. Here. Uh, these screws take a T45 now, but the, the front brake disc screws are a little smaller, they take a T40. Now we'll take a 5 8 socket and pull out the fasteners for the sprocket. It's going to need a little encouragement, I think. Here's the uh, bearing installer and remover kit. It's uh, cheap Chinese junk, so I gotta be real careful when I use it. I've learned uh, the first time I used it, in fact, uh, this nut that came with, the threads galled on it real bad, so I found a heavier, good American steel nut instead to replace that one, but yeah, let's show how this works. So we take the proper size collet, the 25 millimeter one for these 25 millimeter internal diameter bearings. And this little lip here is going to just barely catch on the edge where the bearing meets the spacer that's inside there. So first of all, this is like a tensioner piece that goes up inside there. That way when it's tightened down and the collet is inside there, it spreads these ears apart and those little, that little rib grabs on the far side of the bearing and they were able to pull it out. I want to just have that loose initially so it's not applying any tension to those ears. Sometimes can push it in there, sometimes it needs a little tap. There. Oh, 
felt that little snap and it clicked into place in the rib behind. So now the spacer is going to go down on there and then this washer and then we screw the big nut onto those threads and we tighten it down and it pulls the bearing out after we tension this up. But I need to get that nut off to get this down on there. But if I take the nut and washer off of there, that center piece is going to drop right out. So I'm going to just take my ratchet from the far side, stick it up there to hold that up in place while I slip these over the top and then I'll put that little nut back on there. find it helps to drop a little bit of penetrant around the edge of the bearing and let it kind of work its way in there to the edge. I should have done that before I put this on there, but I forgot. So then we tighten this nut a little bit to bring that tension onto the collet. Just a little bit. Gotta have enough, but not too much. Snug. And then, because uh, it's a cheap Chinese kit, you gotta be sure to use lubricant on the threads or else they're going to want to go and start tightening it up and that bearing should start coming out oh there i just felt it pop so sometimes it's a little hard to get started the older they are the longer they've been in there the tougher they can be but i felt it pop pretty easy so now it's just smoothly pulling out so i'll just slowly keep turning it adding lube every once in a while here. The bearings, yeah, yeah, no. It's not even a quarter of way out yet, but I don't want my threads on my tool to get hot. Then they'll gall, and then I'm screwed. So, easy as that. Then take out the spacer if I can get a grip on it. long spacer. Pull out the spacer, then same procedure on the bearing on the other side, and then same on the front wheel. Uh, this rear wheel is a 18 inch by 8 inch, and the front one is 18 inch by 4 and a half inch. And this right side of the wheel was the ABS bearing, and a lock brake system special bearing, and uh, it's got a groove on it and a colored seal that went towards the inside. Now this side of the uh, front wheel that's opposite the brake disc, you know, obviously this isn't covered by a brake disc or a sprocket or anything that's exposed. So I covered it a little bit with this heavy, heavy duty, thick Gorilla tape so that the feet on this puller spacer here don't mar up the aluminum on there. Now we got to get these tires off the rims. So start by pulling out the valve cores, letting all the air out. Then we'll break the bead all the way around. And I'll peel these wheel weights off of here. They can be pretty stuck, but just keep working at it. Peel them off. Last thing is to uh, lubricate the valve stem a little bit and then just uh, pull it out from the inside with a pair of pliers.
Now, just for point of interest, the wheels alone are, looks like, 22 for the rear. And the front one looks like 16 pounds. Now, this headlight trim ring is easy to get off. There's just one screw right there holding it on. Used an eighth inch Allen to get that screw off. Those, the headlight trim ring screw traditionally on a Harley is a Phillips head, but now, at least on this model, they've gone to Allen head there. When I take things to get powder coated, if there's any threaded holes, like this uh, nut that's welded on the belt guard here, I always take one of my own bolts and just stick it in there, just as like a sacrificial bolt to protect the threads. Then I don't have to worry about the powder coater trying to find bolts with the right thread to stick in there and protect them. So that works. You can see this one's black, so it's I've used it before to protect threads on something that um, actually I think probably was painted. It looks like on this one but on the wheels here I don't have to worry about these threaded holes because they're gonna be taping off this entire surface anyway to keep it smooth level and clean for remounting the sprockets and brake discs and of course in there where the bearing is going there certainly can't be any powder coating either now to get this dash piece off I pulled the seat off in order to be able to get it at this screw uh, that's a 530 seconds Allen and so are these two but these have a nut on the back side so Need your uh, 3 16 Allen to take that off. Take the whole dash assembly off and then separate these two pieces here. This thing was really glued down just because uh, it hasn't been off yet. It just kind of stuck because of the rubber seal. I had to wiggle it and pull it a whole bunch. But So these screws here, like I said, and there's just the nut on the back side there. Then to get these fender struts off, they have to come off with the fender. So just disconnect the tail end wiring here at the connectors under the seat and then uh, pull these screws out. Those take a uh, T45 Torx. These are the turn signal connectors but this one's for the uh, license plate lamp. Uh, this connector is a little complicated so I figured I'd explain it. This is like a lock, this gray thing. You have to pull that out like that and then the connector separates right here. After you pull that lock out then you push down right on that gray part of that locking mechanism and then it separates very simply. Thanks. Then on each side, pull these two screws out of each fender strut plus the one on the inside that holds the fender to the strut and then the strut will come off the fender. Once the struts are off the fender, then it's just a matter of pulling the wiring that's taped on there. And then um, this bike already has uh, aftermarket tail lights, but the stock tail lights are similar where there's just a nut there that's holding the tail light on. So that's got to come off and go around the wiring in order to get that the tail light disconnected. And that'll be it. If you want to see more random garage things, Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you'll get a random notification when a new random garage video is posted. We'll see you next time for part two when this thing gets reassembled with the new powder coated parts. As always, thanks for watching Random Garage here in Sturgis, and whatever you do, make sure you're always doing something.